A striking visual transformation before and after a year of no food. In 1965, Angus Barbieri embarked on a record-breaking fast lasting 382 days. He survived on tea, coffee, water and vitamins, astonishingly dropping from 456 to 180 pounds, or 207 to 82 kilos. What truly happens to your body during such an extreme fast? Let's dive into the profound changes and uncover the truth behind one of the most extreme fasting cases ever documented. What goes on in your body when you don't eat for a year? And what does this teach us about prolonged fasting? Let's explore the science of survival without food for a year. Can you imagine not eating for a year and 17 days? The Scotsman Angus Barbieri's fasting journey is one of the most extraordinary medical anecdotes in the history of non-surgical weight loss. His motivation? Simply to lose weight. In 1965, at 27 years old and weighing 456 pounds, 207 kilos, Angus was so sick of being obese that he checked into a hospital and told staff that he was ready to cut out food altogether. Doctors agreed to monitor his health and progress with frequent examinations and blood tests. Under the care of his doctors, Angus consumed only non-caloric fluids like tea, coffee and sparkling water and occasional supplements to prevent deficiencies. To start with, only short, frequent fasts were planned by doctors, but Angus adapted so well to fasting that his determination skyrocketed and he just kept going, embarking on what would become a record-breaking fast that lasted for 382 days under strict supervision. The results were staggering. Angus lost 276 pounds or 125 kilos and set a record for the longest confirmed fast in recorded medical history. That's a rate of weight loss of 0.7 pounds a day or 0.3 kilos per day. This story raises several exciting questions we'll explore. What really happened to his body? Did he poop? What happened when he ate again? Did he keep the weight off? What are the benefits of longer fasts? How long should you fast for? And importantly, what risks and fasting mistakes should you watch out for? Fasting isn't just some fad diet. Deliberate fasting has been a transformative health practice for thousands of years. But in recent years, it has captured the attention of the modern health community for its profound benefits across various physiological and psychological aspects, captured by the story of Angus Barbieri. It is practiced in many forms, such as intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, and extended fasting periods, usually much less than a year, each with its unique impact on the body and health outcomes. The broad appeal of fasting lies in its simplicity. You don't need to fork out money for snake oil nutritional products, and it actually saves you money in time, as well as significant health advantages. Primarily, fasting is renowned for its role in weight management and metabolic health improvement. As short fasts are becoming popular, we're starting to see prolonged fasting take off too. Really long fasts take things to another level though, and it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Angus Barbieri's fasting journey demonstrates the major things you'll notice happening to your body with longer fasts. What are these changes? Typically, the modern human body relies on glucose from the diet as its primary source of energy. However, during extended fasting, stored glucose in the form of glycogen is quickly depleted, usually within 24 to 48 hours. To continue meeting energy demands, the body begins to break down fatty acids as the main energy source, resulting in the production of ketone bodies, a process known as ketogenesis. Angus's experience is a textbook case of this shift, a process that not only fueled him, but also protected his brain cells from damage. Studies indicate that ketone bodies, such as beta-hydroxybutyrate and acetoacetate, rise significantly during fasting, becoming the primary energy substrates for the brain and other tissues. Think of this as switching to a cleaner, more efficient fuel for the brain, but more on the brain later. The glucose to ketone metabolic adaptation is crucial, as it allows for the preservation of muscle and lean body tissue. Muscle breakdown, or catabolism, can be a significant risk during long-term fasting. However, the use of ketones for energy reduces the body's reliance on amino acids from muscle protein, thus protecting muscle mass. Research shows that ketones are an efficient and high-energy fuel that can support major body functions during times of decreased food intake. You've probably heard about starvation mode, and the idea that fasting will cause muscle loss as your body breaks down muscles for energy. This doesn't really apply to prolonged fasting, as fats and ketones supply your energy needs. Just look at Angus. He looks fine after a year. Plus, autophagy can supply some of the protein, which I'll talk about next. 
However, there is one thing which if you do not do during a fast, will cause your body to break down its muscles. More on that when I cover how to make prolonged fasts safe later in the video. Fasting triggers a process called autophagy, a vital mechanism for maintaining cellular health and vitality. Autophagy acts as a quality control process within each cell, enabling the clearance or recycling of worn out components. This includes breaking down old proteins into their amino acid building blocks, which are then repurposed to form new protein structures. Remarkably, through autophagy, the body can regenerate and create new proteins without the need for external intake from food. One of the remarkable benefits of autophagy is its role in preserving muscle mass. By facilitating the production of new proteins, autophagy reduces the necessity to break down muscle tissue. Although there is no specific mention of doctors measuring Angus Barbieri for muscle loss during his prolonged fast, he survived and his overall health improved, suggesting the potential protective effect of autophagy on muscle preservation. Research indicates that autophagy, as a cellular catabolic process, plays a crucial role in regulating muscle regeneration, highlighting its significance in maintaining muscle integrity and function. Autophagy is also linked to a range of protective health benefits, from cognition to cancer and aging. Angus's metabolic shift didn't just reduce his body weight. Fasting has been found to improve cardiometabolic health significantly. Studies indicate that prolonged fasting leads to improved metabolic health and insulin sensitivity as your body kind of takes a break from food-induced insulin spikes. This improved sensitivity improves glucose metabolism and reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes. Amazingly, studies have shown that fasting and ketosis can decrease insulin resistance, potentially even reversing type 2 diabetes. At the same time, scientific studies highlight fasting's capacity to improve cardiovascular health. Fasting optimizes cholesterol and lipid levels, such as a reduction in LDL cholesterol, reducing the risk of coronary artery disease. Ketone bodies have anti-inflammatory properties that can reduce systemic inflammation. Being overweight is accompanied by chronic inflammation, so weight loss plus anti-inflammatory ketones can potentially decrease the risk of chronic diseases associated with high inflammatory states. Fasting lowers high blood pressure, at least during the fast, suggesting a switch to intermittent fasting is needed to sustain the improved blood pressure over time. All of these benefits contribute to a decrease in cardiovascular risk and other chronic conditions. But how might prolonged fasting affect your brain and mental health? Fasting also prompts significant neuroprotective benefits, enhancing cognitive functions and potentially reducing the risk of neurodegenerative diseases. Ketone bodies are more than just energy sources, they are potent signaling molecules that have a significant impact on brain health. Ketones enhance mitochondrial efficiency and increase the production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, or BDNF, a protein that supports brain plasticity, which is crucial for learning and memory. Furthermore, ketones have anti-inflammatory properties that can reduce oxidative stress and metabolic switching may protect against neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. The brain's adaptation to ketosis can also lead to improved cognitive functions. During ketosis, the clarity of thought and concentration often reported by individuals undergoing fasting might be linked to the brain's switch to a more efficient energy source, mitochondrial rejuvenation and stabilization of insulin and lower fluctuations in blood glucose levels, which are common during regular carbohydrate consumption. Additionally, ketosis could improve mood due to the modulation of neurotransmitters like GABA and glutamate and serotonin, crucial for managing anxiety and excitement. Have you ever experienced changes in your mental clarity or energy levels during fasting? Share your experiences in the comments below. Angus Barbieri appears to have experienced a boost in self-efficacy. Self-efficacy refers to a person's belief in their ability to succeed in specific situations or accomplish a task. In the case of Angus Barbieri, his experience during an extended fast could be linked to an improvement in self-efficacy. As he successfully abstained from food for an extended period, his confidence in his ability to control his eating habits and manage his health likely grew. Fasting can have a positive impact on psychological well-being by enhancing self-efficacy. When individuals set a challenging goal, like fasting for an extended period of time and achieve it, they build confidence in their ability to overcome obstacles and stick to their intentions. This sense of accomplishment can boost self-esteem and motivation, leading to an overall improvement in mental health. 
The discipline required for fasting can help individuals develop better self-control, resilience, and determination. These qualities are essential for maintaining good psychological health as they enable individuals to cope effectively with stress, setbacks, and challenges in life. As days became weeks and months, his resolve increased, showing how his fasting experience was also a mental journey, showing how self-efficacy can be strengthened through challenges like prolonged fasting, ultimately contributing to his improved psychological well-being and a greater sense of control over his health and life. Plus, did you think that the longer you go without food, the hungrier you get? That's actually wrong, or at least it's not that simple. People don't realize that hunger is cyclical and hormonally driven based on your eating habits. When you ignore a hunger pang, it actually goes away rather than exponentially increasing. We see this in levels of the hunger hormone ghrelin, which decrease the further you are into your fast, which may explain why people say hunger gets less intense the longer you fast, making longer fasts easier than shorter ones. There are other factors to consider too. By removing all aspects of food from your day-to-day, -day, you save significant time, energy, and money on thinking about food, buying food, cooking food, eating food, washing up, and even pooping. By the way, Angus went between 37 to 48 days between bowel movements. When people fast for longer periods, they often report not just euphoria, but less stress, immense time gains, and productivity. More on how fasting can be useful for productivity and entrepreneurs in another video, coming soon. Did he keep the weight off? And how does extended fasting affect a person's relationship with food? Angus had forgotten the taste of food before his first meal after the fast. His first meal? He ate a boiled egg with a slice of bread and butter, telling reporters, I thoroughly enjoyed my egg and I feel very full. Five years later, Angus remained at a comfortable weight, weighing 196 pounds, or 89 kilos. This doesn't just illustrate that fasting, and especially prolonged fasting, leads to sustainable weight loss where traditional diet and exercise advice fails. It also shows how fasting helps you redefine your connection with food. It teaches you the difference between hunger and true nutritional need, and the experience of savoring that first taste of food after an extended fast often leads to a deeper appreciation for the nourishment and pleasure that food provides. There's a reason fasting has been practiced for thousands of years for spiritual reasons. But what about the risks you need to watch out for? How did Angus and his doctors keep him safe and healthy? Despite these benefits, prolonged fasting such as that undergone by Angus Barbieri carries significant risks, particularly if undertaken without an understanding of how to manage these risks or without medical supervision. If you're thinking of fasting for more than a day or two, here is what you need to understand and the number one mistake that people make when fasting. Your body stores essential nutrients, like vitamins and minerals. However, while your body can store fat-soluble nutrients in your fat for months or more, water-soluble ones are quickly depleted or lost and need to be replenished to prevent micronutrient deficiency. The most important thing to know? Minerals and electrolytes, like magnesium, potassium, chloride, and sodium, are crucial for basic cellular functions, brain function, and muscle contractions, including the heart. If they drop to critically low levels, it can lead to seizures, muscle spasms, arrhythmias, hypotension, or even cardiac arrest. Safer prolonged fasting, especially beyond a few days, critically requires supplementation with not just vitamins, but these electrolytes. And this is just what Angus did with his doctors. The reintroduction of food after a prolonged period of fasting needs to be done carefully, as there are serious risks of complications arising from the body's sudden exposure to nutrients after a period of deprivation. The biggest concern? Despite successfully completing his fast, Angus was constantly at risk for refeeding syndrome caused by electrolyte imbalances, a potentially fatal condition if not managed correctly. These imbalances can occur as the body readjusts its metabolism in response to nutrients, especially carbohydrates and insulin, affecting the regulation of essential minerals like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and phosphorus. These sudden changes in mineral levels in your blood and cells can lead to irregular heart rhythms, muscle spasms, and even death. This is why people are told to reintroduce food slowly, to give your body time to adapt, and avoid binging on carbohydrate-rich foods when they start eating again. Fortunately, this syndrome is extremely rare, but for particularly long fasts, like Barbieri's, it's important to be under close medical supervision to monitor for any signs of these complications. The number one mistake people make when fasting often causes muscle loss. What's this? I mentioned earlier that your body typically won't break down muscle during a fast. 
In fact, your body even massively increases human growth hormone levels to protect its muscles from breakdown. Your body has evolved to keep its muscles intact for as long as possible. You need them to obtain food, hunt and gather after all. However, it would be wrong to say that fasting won't cause any muscle loss at all. There are two obvious situations which will lead to muscle loss. The first, don't fast if you're underweight, obviously. Your body will turn to its muscles if it runs out of fat stores. And the second, if you don't use your muscles. This applies to more than just fasting, actually. Using your muscles and exercising sends a signal to your body that it needs those muscles. Withdraw the exercise and your muscles will return to the size they need to be to carry out your normal daily activities, regardless of whether or not you're fasting. This leads to the biggest mistake people make when fasting. They think that they need to rest as much as possible during their fast. If you become sedentary while fasting, you increase the risk of muscle loss. Therefore, if you're fasting, you need to make sure you incorporate exercise into your daily life to not only get the health benefits of both fasting and exercise, but also to hold onto your muscles. This is part of the reason why Angus fasted for over a year and didn't waste away, but the magician David Blaine sealed himself into a small box without food for 44 days and emerged having lost a lot of lean mass. As we've seen, Angus's journey through a 382-day fast reveals the incredible resilience and adaptability of the human body, demonstrating both the huge benefits but also the serious risks associated with prolonged fasting. Do you think the risks of long-term fasting are worth the potential benefits? Share your views in a comment. But when we talk about extended fasts, we don't mean fasting for a year, normally. Usually, we're talking anything more than a couple of days. The benefits start to accrue much earlier on, and the longer the fast, the more cautious you need to be, and the more important it is to seek medical supervision. So how long should you fast for? Well, if Angus's story has piqued your interest in fasting, but you're looking for something less extreme, you can explore shorter prolonged fasts, or intermittent fasting. To find out more, and the benefits at each stage of the fast, check out this next.